was a great pleasure on behalf of my staff to welcome the members of this uh, committee to EFCC. You will agree with me that uh, the mandate before you, which is also before us, if it's highly, if it's well tackled and managed very well and effectively and efficiently, Nigeria in a long time will not forget us. This is one of the major arbitrals, mitigating factors against our development in Nigeria, the issue of financial crimes and corruption, if we can effectively tackle it, because that is the responsibility before your honorable selves. That is also the mandate of EFCC. Uh, so on this note, uh, it's apt to conclude that um, more than ever before, there is need for us to work together. And I thank you for this engagement, which is part of working together to ensure that uh, we take Nigeria to a greater height. So once again, I want to welcome you very specially. Thank you for coming. On our part, we, just like I made known and uh, declared on the floor of the Senate and because of my confirmation last year, October, just a year in the office and one month now, that um, the essence of the mandate is to move Nigeria forward. And I made known my three policy objectives. Number one, to use the instrumentality of this work to stimulate the economy, which is what is done anywhere anti-corruption works anywhere in the world. We can't be fighting corruption and your economy is not diving. Your fight is not impactful. It's not just about hunting people, about the impact and the effect of the work you are doing. Incidentally, we were privileged to also have uh, your colleagues in the Senate here yesterday. They also came for oversight yesterday, and I made it known to them what I actually meant by that, and I'm going to also explain here. There was a particular case, and quite a number of us will be aware of that case. They call it the Ali Botin case. Ali Botin scandal happened in Nigeria, the issue of bribery and all of that. We did the investigation here in Nigeria. The bribe, bribes was paid in Nigeria at the expense of our economy. But they took all the proof of evidence to the US. The matter was prosecuted in the US. As of the last information I got, the US had made over $3 billion in form of fines, plea bargain from that particular scandal that took place in Nigeria. And not one dime, not one naira, did we make out of that scandal. Not one. No recovery, nothing. But the moment that thing happened, they moved them to the US, they recalled them by provision of their Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. And so for me, we should not go forward with that. Going forward, we shouldn't do that. Our priority is, look, this work we are doing, how can we use it to stimulate our economy? Number two, I also spoke about what the Honorable Chairman has also emphasized, the need for us to operate within the confines of law. We are products of law, established by law. So doing something outside the confines of law uh, is going to be negative to our mandate. Then again, you must also agree with us that we are law enforcement agency. There are certain things that the law itself allows us to do within the reasonable confines of the provisions of that law. Because if we don't do that, you can't carry out your mandate. And lastly, we said we will also use this mandate to improve the image of Nigeria, both locally and internationally. The president is all over the world now preaching investment, you know, even at his age, jumping everywhere, you know, just for us to move forward. But over there, the people know what is going on. At the press of a button, they know whether your atmosphere, your environment is conducive for them to invest or not. They want to come to an environment where people will not, at the press of a button, sue to them of their capital. Where young boys who are supposed to be in school will not carry laptop and wipe off 
you know, their money and hack their account, they won't come to such an environment. Uh, so I said, for us, it is important for us to create an atmosphere that will encourage foreign direct investment and to also promote local economy as well. But so we embarked on that in October last year with the support of my entire management team and the staff of AFCC. Uh, and we're able to pursue our mandate, if, particularly in the area of enforcement. I'm happy to announce to you our modest achievement in that between October last year and October this year, uh, we're able to recover about 250 billion naira cash, 248.7 billion naira cash in naira, uh, so tens of millions of dollars, tens of millions of pounds as well, and other currencies. Now, the question is, how did that happen? If you, are, if you understand the way we work and the intricacies involved in financial crimes investigation and prosecution, you will discover that to recover one billion is war. And I tell my people, I say, look, the moment we start investigation, we continue, I mean, we also start asset tracing. You see, one of the potent instruments that you can deploy as an anti-corruption agency for you to be effective is the issue of asset tracing and recovery. If you allow the suspect or those you are in, you know, investigating to have access to assets, they will fight you. So one of the ways to weaken them is to deprive them of that assets. So simultaneously, our modus operandi has changed. At the moment we begin investigation with you, we begin asset tracing. And so that was what helped us to make such uh, recoveries. In the area of conviction as well, we, we've done well over 3,000. Uh, I also want to disorientate your mind about what people are saying that uh, it's only Yahoo Yahoo. That's not true. We have evidence here. We have high profile cases with secure conviction on. And again, not uh, just like I told the senators yesterday, this issue of Yahoo Yahoo that we, some of us see or do with kick gloves, um, we don't see it that way. A particular crime that can cause a nation a loss of over $500 million is what some people are, you know, jesting about. Uh, you know. And uh, it's so unfortunate that a lot of people, even learned minds, don't appreciate what we're doing. And so unfortunate. We expect that because uh, when you are fighting corruption, it's obvious that corruption will fight back. Yeah, so we, as we wait for all the challenges. We, are, we expect that. We are not perturbed by that. We will continue to work. We continue to observe sleepless nights. Start of this Sunday, we are here working. Irrespective of what people are saying about us, but what we know within ourselves is that we will do this work. Within the limit of our resources, we will be committed to the work. And so that's about enforcement. We have several cases filed in court, apart from the conviction, thrown into thousands. In the last one year, we have received over 17,000 petitions here in the EFCC alone, over 17,000. And right now, as I'm talking to you, we are investigating over 20,000 cases. In the la between last year, October, and now, we have opened new cases, case files of, 4, 000, of over 4,800. And what is our staff strength? We are less than 5,000. And now, with the additional responsibility of over 700 MDAs, 36 states, 774 local government, all of that. Uh, so well now, apart from enforcement, the, our mandate also has to do with prevention. In the course of one, in the, within the last one year, we have had cause to emphasize this issue of prevention more than ever before. Because the issue is, um, I, I was somewhere in East Africa, we were asked, in North Africa rather, we were asked to come and um, deliver a paper on asset recovery. Because virtually when you look at it across the world, Nigeria is at the front, you know, run, it's on the front runner of asset recovery. Anywhere in the world we are recognized and respected for that. Uh, so I was there and I told them they were trying to tell us to tell them how much we have recovered. But I restrained myself so that uh, it doesn't look as if we are exposing our, ourselves unnecessarily. And I did that because, number one, when you 
recover such amount, you can imagine what is going on, what has been stolen. So we're not, we are not, yes, some people could see it as an achievement for me, uh, it's more of a challenge. Now, next year, I don't want to recover as much as much. You know why? Because I will, we are going to deploy preventive measures. For you to recover 10 Naira, perhaps 30, 40 Naira has been stolen. So within a year, if you recover about 248 billion in Naira and several millions of dollars, over 100 billion dollars, you imagine how much has been stolen in our system. And so that is the pathetic aspect of the story. And we are doing something about that. So we are emphasizing prevention. The last one year, we have had, have had cause to establish a new directorate called Fraud Risk Assessment and Control. To recover 10 Naira, you spend between 4 and 5 Naira. But to prevent 10 Naira from being stolen, you spend less than 1 Naira from our research and our experience. So I believe the more effective way of fighting corruption is to prevent. Uh, so the, uh, the, the mandate of that department or directorate is to go into all the MDAs and to work with the Office of the Acting General to look at the releases, go into MDAs and the implementation of the project. And we discovered that in the last 15, 20 years, we have not done up to 20% of our capital project implementation and execution. And if you don't do that, how do you want to have infrastructural development? How do you want to grow as a nation? So our mandate this year is to work with that directorate and with the National Assembly to see if we can meet up to 50% of our execution of our capital project. If we do 50%, we'll be fine as a nation. And um, I want to thank you for your detailed uh, explanations. Uh, distinguished colleagues, when uh, we were coming, we had a small uh, discussion and agreed that um, this is more like uh, a familiarization visit because uh, this is the first time we are visiting this place as a committee. Um, we have also received the documents you submitted to us and they are voluminous. We received the majority of them today. And we agree that uh, we are going to look, take time to study these documents. We are not going to speak to these documents today. We are going to take time to study it. If there is need, we invite you for an interactive uh, section. Uh, I want to also say that um, I picked some points from what you said. The preventive uh, strategy of uh, uh, combating crime has to be encouraged. We, we have to be, the commission should be proactive and um, all the supports you need for technology, you need to, I mean, prevent this crime before it's committed. Like you said, if you recover 10 million, for instance, maybe 100 million must have been uh, eaten. So that we need to encourage. Again, um, let me also commend you for the radio station you established. The day it was commissioned, we were all here. Uh, I listened to it, it time I'm in Abuja, and I can tell you that those people who phone in, there are a lot of things they don't know. A lot of the fact, if not recently, that you took up the issue of abuse of Naira. Many people don't know that it's a crime. Many people, especially from our own uh, side, our uh, people, it's almost a culture in our place to spray money. So, but when you started it and uh, made serious incursion into the system, you can see that uh, it has reduced, especially from public officers and uh, even uh, traders. The resources you need, uh, very soon we will enter into the appropriation season and um, we will sit down, uh, the committee assisted the last time, we will also sit down to know areas the committee can help uh, so that um, uh, this place will be properly funded. The image of Nigeria depends on the function of this committee. Uh, finally, before I open the floor for one or two members, but before then, uh, we will ask the uh, press to leave us so that we can 
preserving the executive section, it will be properly moved and seconded, and we agree on that. Uh, let me also commend you for this uh, environment. Each time I come here, I'm always uh, glad because of the neatness and the ambience we see here. So keep it up. It is uh, worth commending. It's not easy to maintain a facility like this. Though we also move out, but I've visited here one or two times, and uh, today I also look around to see that uh, the place is uh, clean. So on that note, thank you, sir. And I, I think I need to promise you when we take a tour to our cell now. Yes. Some of you would like to spend the night with us. <laughs> <laughs> also enjoy, enjoy. Uh, yes, yeah, of course. I, I sleep here now. This is my house. <laughs> this is my house. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, let me now invite any of our colleagues who's ready to move that we resolve to executive section where the gentlemen of the press will leave and uh, other people who are not at them so that we can answer. Uh, on a